Hi, this is Donna Lewis for the Clark County Park District again, and today I'm talking about what should you do if you find a fox in your yard. Well, first of all, fox live every, everywhere, and if you look behind me, I'm at the Davidson Interpretive Center, and fox would definitely live in this area as well as coyote, deer, lots of other animals, but a lot of animals like wooded areas and farmland to live in, and fox are one of those animals that a lot of times live on farm field edges, woods, the edges of woods. They'll also live in urban areas. Fox are one of, is, is like the most widespread canine in, in the U.S. at least. And there's tons of them in Europe. So probably the world. Um, yeah, it is. So some of the information I'm getting today is from a book called Wild Neighbors written by John Hadidian. And it's, I've used this book a lot to figure out what to do when there's calls on animals people are having issues with. Now I'm gonna read this book. Now I know this is geared towards adults, but you can find some great information in kids' books, so your kids will enjoy this too. This talks about a fox's den. So it tells you where they build a den, and I'm gonna then I'm gonna tell you why it's not a huge concern, and what you can do if you are concerned about things like chickens, which I have at my house too, and I have a mother fox around. In the woods, a furry red fox just climbed out of a hole. The hole is hidden among the roots of, of a fallen tree. The hole is the entrance to the fox's den. So sometimes you might see a little hole somewhere in the ground or something. Um, your wood pile, they'll make holes sometimes under your wood pile, under your deck sometimes, under your barn, and that's where they'll live. Foxes dig under, underground dens where they raise their babies. Sometimes adult foxes dig a den to use as a sleeping place but foxes usually sleep above the ground. So there's pictures you'll see a fox of a fox curled up sleeping. That's what they'll usually do, just above the ground. So their dens are usually for raising young. Um, so right here you see some tree roots and there's the den entrance where she's sitting and she's probably got young in there. By the way, this is a book written by Dee Phillips. I should probably give her credit. It's a really cute book with some great pictures. Foxes belong to the same animal family as wolves, coyote, and your pet dog. They usually live in woods and on farmland, which I talked about, so an area like this is a favorite kind of spot. Sometimes, however, they live in parks and in backyards, in cities and towns. An adult fox's body is about 35 inches long. Its tail is about 30 inches long, so the tail's almost the size of its body. So. Here's your typical red fox, okay? Fox are an introduced species, but they have lived here for years now, so they're not considered an invasive um, species to this area. You, they come from Europe. They're, so they're not very big. Spring is a time of year when male and females mate. After mating, the foxes dig a den. The den has an entrance hole that leads to a tunnel. At the bottom of the tunnel, the foxes dig a nest room. The foxes may also dig more tunnels, which lead to extra holes for going in and out of the den. So here shows an example of a fox's den, which is pretty interesting if you have a fox or in your property to see where they're living. So here's your entrance hole and the tunnel. And this is where she's gonna have her babies at, way down to try to keep them safe from predators, okay? And then there's an extra hole, okay? So that she can they can escape if something comes in to get them. So the male fox, there's the male fox and there's a the female. She would be inside with the babies. The male and female will help raise those young. Okay, so not all animals do that. So that's pretty cool to see what a den looks like. In the den, the female gives birth to her babies called cubs. At first, the cubs' eyes are closed and they cannot see. The, the tiny babies sleep on a bed of grass and leaves in the nest room. The female fox stays inside the den with the cubs. When she gets hungry, the male fox brings her food. So the male's kind of like, he's the one that goes and finds the food and brings her the food so she can take care of the babies. And it takes about two months for those babies to be born once she is pregnant with the babies. And here's your one week old fox cubs. Look how cute they are. So they're not red when they're first born. So completely helpless like a puppy and she has to take care of them. For the first two weeks after the cubs are born, mother never leaves the den. She stays close to keep them warm and feed them milk from her body. She licks them to keep them clean. When they are about 10 days old, the cubs open their eyes. Once they are two weeks old, 
the female fox starts to make short trips out of the den to find food for herself. So she gets out for a little bit, right? Moms need to do that. So here's your three week old cub. Starting to get bigger there. A female fox usually gives birth to five cubs at one time. Sometimes, however, she might have as many as 13. So here's the fox cubs drinking the milk. So they drink mother's milk, just like baby pup, just like puppies do. So she has to be there to take care of them. Adult foxes spend their days resting. As evening falls, they start to look for food. Foxes hunt mice, rabbits, chipmunks, birds, and other small animals. They dig in the dirt to find worms and insects, so they eat a lot of different stuff. Sometimes they eat fruit and vegetables from farms. Foxes also eat eggs, berries, acorns, and even grass. Foxes that live in cities and towns often look in garbage cans for scraps of food that people have thrown away. So they've learned to live off of people a little bit when they live in when they live in places closer to us. So here's a fox with a mouthful of mice. So they're really good to have around your property property because they help keep the rodent population down. Okay. To catch its food, a fox quietly trots through woodlands or around the edges of fields. It's always listening for the rustle of small animals in the grass and leaves. It uses its hearing, it uses its hearing, it has really good big ears. If it hears a mouse, the fox pounces. It leaps high into the air and lands with its front paws on the mouse. I had a little fox here. The mouse is trapped and cannot escape. So they're really good at pouncing. Here's a fox pouncing, okay? Sometimes their actions are more like a cat, even though they are a canine. A fox sometimes digs a hole in the ground and buries some of the food it has found. The fox can then eat this food on another day. It's like having a kitchen cabinet where it stores its food. At about five weeks old, the cubs get to go outside the den. They stay close to the entrance, however, while their parents watch for predators. Their parents also begin to feed them meat at about this time. So at about five weeks, the She's gonna start hunting for meat for the cubs. As the cubs get older, the parents even bring them live mice. That lets the cubs practice hunting. By eight weeks of age, the cubs no longer need to drink their mother's milk. So no more nursing at about eight weeks of age. Fox cubs like to chase and play fight with each other. They also like to play with old bones and scraps of food. It helps them know what they're supposed to eat. So there's some playing right there. There's a mom feeding her baby. This, this book has great pictures. So at about eight weeks, they're, um, they're gonna start practice hunting by this time. They've not, they're stopping, they're not drinking milk. So if you have a den in your yard, you think you do, this is the kind of things to remember, how long it takes for those babies to leave. Animals such as coyotes and wolves catch and eat fox cubs. So around this area, it would be coyote. It doesn't mean they're bad. Coyote are native animals. It's just the food that, one of the things they eat. Anytime one of these predators finds a den, the parents quickly move the cubs. The parents will keep protecting their young all through the summer. By fall, however, the cubs will be grown-ups. They will be ready to live on their own, mate, and have their own babies. So by fall, they're ready to be on their own. So here, oh, sometimes a female fox stays with her parents for a year or two once she's an adult. She helps her parents take care of their new cubs. So some animals do do that. Like beaver, they'll stay and help care for the young. So there's mom with her older babies. She's probably like, okay, it's about time for you guys to go. She's probably getting a little stressed at that point. So she's got at least three there. So that's about it for some of the fox, uh, the <laughs> facts about fox. So we're gonna talk about what if you have one in your yard. So there's some good information for you. Um, kids books are great places to learn some cool little facts about anim animals. Um, it helps me sometimes gear my um, program sometimes so it's easy to follow and I'm not giving you too much information. So the fox. So we have them everywhere. They're all over. Coyote are all over too. It's nothing to worry about. What if you have dogs and cats that you're worried about and you think this fox that's raising her young, you're worried about it because she's close. Well, fox are pretty small, so they're usually not going to mess with your dog, and they'd be pretty brave to mess with your cat. So the one thing you want to worry about is if you have young, like small dogs or, or kittens. So then they, they could be prey to the fox, but the fox is going to prefer smaller animals. So mice and voles and 
um, berries and grapes and eggs and you know small little animals that they find outside that's mostly what they're gonna eat but if you have chickens like I do they do love chickens okay so what can you do so what we do at my house is we put up something to attack the senses so what you have to do is to try to steer them away from your property so the good thing is th things you can do is put out automatic automated sprinklers so if something is sensed around the sprinkler it will spray them animals don't like to be sprayed it also works for rabbits around your garden we do that at my house we put used cat litter at the perimeter of our yard and they don't like that ammonia smell who does so ammonia that ammonia smell really helps keep other animals away as well so it's important you're attacking their senses so you've got you know spray Ooh, that's annoying smell okay something you can also do is get these ultrasonic sound things so if they sense something in front of it they'll put off the sound and it is geared towards their ears they don't like it no way and they get out of there okay so the important thing is to do it to do is not to harm the fox because what you'll do is you'll leave babies with no mom um, and another fox will move into that like oh a vacancy okay so I'm gonna move into this territory so that's what you have to remember with all animals if you just get rid of them other animals will move in to take their place so the best thing to do is to discourage them from being there so make it so they don't want to be there make sure your chicken coop is secured at night that's mostly when these guys are out mine is very secure but it could also be something during the day. They could come out during the day too when they're feeding their cubs. So I have less chickens to fox. Um, my chickens run. So if you have roaming chickens, it's more likely to happen. So I can't really blame the fox. But those are things, those, those attacking the senses things can help keep them away. If you have a den someplace where you don't want it, ammonia soaked rags and like a baggie with holes in it sometimes helps get them away. They don't, again, they don't like that ammonia smell or you can use your cat litter. Um, so they will probably move the cubs, but if you can just wait like eight weeks Those cubs are gonna start going out and being on their own um, Those um, fox am I saying the right thing cubs? I think so <laughs> Kits, I think I'm I talk about so many animals. I forget what they're called. So Very important. So if you have a fox try to do some things to discourage it from being in your yard if you don't have anything to worry about you have a big dog you have pretty big healthy cats no kittens enjoy the experience because it's not something that everybody gets to do so it's something really cool if you I've never been able to do it if you get to watch mama fox both mama and dad fox take care of their young that's a really cool experience and I've heard of people having that experience and I'm a little jealous so but we currently have a mama nearby our house at someone else's yard and so we just have to do extra things to protect our chickens so just remember it's just learning ways to you know live with the wildlife that live in your yard all right if you guys have any questions the best way to get a hold of me is to go to d lewis at clarkcountyparks.org and send me an email i'm starting to get rained on um you can also go to our website the clarkcountyparkdistrict.org if you can't find my email or forget it but um, go to you just send me an email and a question and I check my emails all the time and um, just find out ask us questions if you're not sure what to do all right and if you ever find a baby fox what if you find a baby fox that doesn't have a mom then you want to call a rehabilitation center so you can find those in your area by going to www.owra.org and there is a list of um rehabilitators by state so you go to your state let's say it's texas go to your county and you can find a rehabilitator hopefully that can help you out so everybody enjoy the day and i think i'm gonna go in now before it rains on me so until next time bye bye